All-American on two sides of the ball, Troy Anderson. Troy Anderson, he'll keep it all the way on a quarterback. Pass. Troy Anderson, the rookie from Montana State. The punt is blocked, and a scoop and score off the block of Troy Anderson. Kind of reflect on the season and just, like, the whirlwind that was the last year, like from the end of college going into training and then, you know, OTAs and um, training camp and then the season, it's just like, yeah, I've had a break. And so I was like able to decompress, I guess. And yeah, I was excited to get home and see family and friends and hang out for a couple months. And lifting and working out and stuff, so. Do you work out at good. Montana State? I haven't, yeah. Nice. So we bought this place 26 years ago, okay. and um, Scott's, oh, he's fourth generation, Troll will be fifth, but they had a ranch up in the Blacktail Mountains. Now we're in a, the big hole in a different place. A week have March to May. Oh, he's a little chilly. We'll put him in the shed and they get a better start. Most of the time, I'd say, of the time it's super smooth like they have calf get up everything's great like no problems so Come on, buddy. yeah uh. so we moved out here and had holly and then troy came two years later and it yeah it was different i had worked in my home has a natural food store in town and so i'd been working there and with holly it was fine but when i had two too much we got one right on deck who's going to calve here pretty quick. And when we were young parents, we didn't know nothing. But I think we did about 400 mother cows. Yeah, we were about 400 yeah. cows about that time. And yeah. we've grown and worked hard. I think Troy and I were talking about, I think, was he maybe around 10 when he started driving the rake, you know, haying and stuff. I mean, they did become really good help. Well, we we get on the four, first it was horses. We got horses and we'd trail cows and they'd be on horseback riding, you know, behind. So they, they helped, they were good help. And it was but just all about being together. Troy was young and he was on a four-wheeler at probably five, even even just bringing lunch out. Oh, yeah. And that True. was help, or, yeah. or shuttling tractors back and forth from field True. to field. Yeah. And and so it was it was helpful. And when Holly was little, she had a stick in her hand walking down this lane, huffing cows, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and Lots of pushing cows up and down the lane, yeah. Growing up in a really rural place, um, out of town. We spent a lot of time outside. Um, we rode bikes down the dirt road. We played with the animals. We rode horses. Um, really, it was an amazing upbringing. I think looking back um, and you know hearing perspectives from other people who have never been around that kind of lifestyle, it's like, wow, this was amazing. And to us, it was just like normal. <laughs> I think it's a small town deal. We were kind of in sports a little bit and you want your kids to do better and whatever and we gave them every opportunity. They could just do everything, try everything, see what they liked and they pretty much liked everything so it was like all right go. go for it. Especially Troy with sports, you know Holly did music, some other things too but he anything you could play he wanted to play and so from the time he was four and they had the little bitty soccer, bitty basketball, he was all about it and, and whatever he was doing that day was his favorite thing in the world. Oh, nice. Nice try. Because we're not a huge community, um, some of the groups are by three age groups. And so, the you know, one of them might grades three, four, five grouped together. And so a lot of those kids, when they're even young like that, playing against athletes that are two years older, it's still fairly competitive. And we, we had a really good run with kids right around Troy's age that were very athletic. 
that core group of athletes. When we start them as fourth graders in basketball, they never miss practices. I would go in early, my two sons have played, let's go in early so we can get some extra time in. I started that so I could work with my kids individually. It ended up where all of the other kids came early too because they wanted to get, they wanted to work hard, they wanted to get better. So it wasn't, so then we just, they would all come in and wanted more time and more help and, and wanted to get better. And you know, when the whole crew, when the whole group of kids comes together like that and, and, and has a work ethic like that, then you, at fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, then that's a special group. And, and then that class was a very smart class. You know, Troy's valedictorian. I mean, they're, all those kids were scholar athletes. His intelligence, you know, just his feel out on the, on the field all the time. He's a third grader taking an angle on a fifth grader running down the sideline. You know, he's not playing chase, you know, like most of the kids might do. Just his instincts that he had, he just reacted and he already had some of that stuff at, a, at such a young age there. I think back in about the fourth grade, I said, this kid's probably gonna make the NFL. And I mean, it was apparent to everybody. When I first got here, I think it was 2014 or 2015, and kind of found my way in coaching quarterbacks in, in a little niche there. And uh, we had just started meeting at lunches in his junior year. You could tell pretty quickly that his skills set him apart. I, I had some buddies that were coaching in some different spots around the, around the US, and I would send him film and just say, hey, you know, what do you think of this guy? You like to compete, uh, and then you give the athletic ability that he had, and he uh, got significantly better year by year, and rightfully so. I mean, he worked hard to do it. Uh, his speed level, his strength level, all the different things that he built in the weight room and then was applied on the field. And from a basketball and football standpoint in the sports that I worked, uh, you could tell that it was pretty special and that, that he had that kind of uh, juice that not a lot of kids have. Oh yeah, he was fast. Yeah, and, and he, he only had one speed. It was a full speed ahead. That's Troy. In basketball, our biggest concern in basketball is can we keep him in the game long enough? He got in foul trouble a lot. He's full physical. Remember his first game that he started as a junior, we were playing the best team in the state uh, that we'd faced that year. And he threw for 270 yards and ran for another 100 and plus. And so right off the bat, I mean, he just stood out at the quarterback position and you could tell his reads were on. Uh, we ended up winning the game by a point, and then that was the team that beat us in the state championship, you know. But they had probably 22, 23 seniors. And so he didn't do these, put these huge numbers up against, you know, just a weak team. This team was outstanding. They were loaded. How many state championships did that class win? Well, See, Tanner and Troy were two basketball state championships. <clears throat> Troy's senior year, we were undefeated in football, won a state championship, but undefeated in basketball, won a state championship in the same year. Then they won track that year, too. It was a good collaboration of a success. So a basketball, of... football, track. Um, a lot of God-given gifts, but the hard work really enhanced it. <laughs> There's a lot of banners in the high school because of those guys, okay. and it was it was a really fun time for us. Yeah. Dillon was title town because of all the things that Troy helped do in our in Montana. So, anyway. when he went over to Montana State and they were recruiting him. And it was an individual camp, uh, and he hadn't committed yet. And their defensive coordinator, he said to Troy, he says, hey Troy, just get in the boat, the rest will follow. And what he meant by that was he was the most important commitment that they could get as a recruit. And once Troy committed to that team, they built their whole program around Troy Anderson. 
the difference that he made at uh, Montana State University is just unbelievable. From the 25, pressure off the edge. Anderson escapes, has a receiver wide open, and he hits him in stride. Shotgun for Anderson. He'll keep it all the way on a quarterback power, and he bounces off the pile. Prince his way for six. And the Bobcats, something to celebrate. Knowing what he was athletically, um, he played running back first and then this combination of quarterback and outside linebacker and then knowing the defense that we intended on running uh, seeing his potential Mike linebacker and inside backer this player that had done so many things and then trying to narrow it into something specific that he really hadn't done and trying to convince him that that was going to be best for Montana State and also best for Troy moving forward and, and I really appreciate his openness and willingness to, to, to listen to you know what we saw in him. We all knew that Troy was an NFL talent, um, but we also knew that playing quarterback at, in the NFL probably wasn't the avenue that he was going to need to take to be there. So it was, hey, you just put your body on the line for the last two years playing quarterback, getting us to the playoffs, you know, winning playoff games. Uh, now we want to do right by you and put you in a position so you can uh, highlight what you do well on the defensive side of the ball, which is ultimately where, uh, you know, the NFL scouts were telling us he was going to end up. You know, it's a great story because uh, he listened, he worked his tail off um, while not going through spring ball, summer, and then obviously had the, the senior season that uh, was remarkable. Oh, every, every week we drove over to Bozeman, we just were like, wow, this is so amazing. This is so awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it just kept exceeding our, our expectations. Back out of the gun, intercepted! Troy Anderson's got it, he's going the other way! 10-5, touchdown! Montana State with another pick six! These are all college. Where did you find all this stuff? Oh, I just unboxed up downstairs, so I'm trying to see what order. So, freshman year, he got um, Rookie of the Year. You won the MVP in 19 and 21. Uh -huh. One defensive player of the year for a Big Sky Conference. Um, this one. So this was the uh, Buck Buchanan Award finalist in 2021. We knew he was special, and you know, whether it was being told that or going back to look at the highlights in the film, um, the stats, <laughs> to go with this humility uh, that it's not always there in a kid that's had the level of success he had. I had every NFL scout come through here throughout the fall and sit down with me individually and want to know how fast Troy was. And I said, I think he runs four fours and it kind of got a couple looks like, yeah, whatever, a four four. Starting off with one of my favorites here from Troy Anderson from Montana State, Bobcat. Was a quarterback, then a running back, then an outside linebacker, then an inside linebacker. I said with the combine, I think knew he would put a numbers, but you know the 40 that he ran in particular, um, I would guess he'd go across our state. There's a lot of people that remember where they were when Troy ran that 40. Woohoo! 441. Yeah, way to start. I was thinking maybe like 49, 48, and then when he rips off the 41, um, you know, a bunch of us were uh, sitting over across the street at the bar because there was a, a basketball game going over here, and we left the basketball game to go watch Troy run. And I've never seen an explosion of people excited about a 40 at a combine at a bar like that. It was just a pretty unique experience. He's the fastest guy that comes <laughs> through, and I know who else is coming, and they're all studs, you know, and they're just like, this is, I mean, it was surreal. It was, yeah. we, we've used surreal so many times, but it's a little kid from Dillon, Montana. Hey, Troy, how you doing, buddy? Hello, Mr. Blank. How's it going? Well, it's going great. Are you excited to come to Atlanta? <laughs> I'm extremely excited. I had no clue 
where he is going. I knew he was going somewhere. And I had no clue that it would be that early either. Croy Beerman is from Hardin, Montana and played at the Falcons for a long time. Shan Schillinger, Montana, you know, Arthur Blank with all his properties in Montana, you know. We just celebrated, we're like, unbelievable. I just can't imagine, you know, all the work that he's put in. I know that a lot of people have seen the stuff he's done at MSU. Some of the stuff that he did here, he has the same work ethic. Certainly he has a lot of talent, but man, that to, to get a call from an NFL team. With the 58th pick, in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Troy Anderson, linebacker, Montana State. <laughs> of course, we were watching it on TV, unfolding live, and just like, oh my goodness. And uh, I think, again, he was just so excited. You could tell he was so nervous at the same time. Yeah, it was a big moment for, for Troy, obviously, for Dylan, for Bozeman, but our state, I mean, in a state that doesn't have an NFL team, you quickly knew that you know, the favorite team would be the Falcons pretty soon. There was a lot of stress mm -hmm. last year, you know, with this whole process. Am I going to get drafted? And then once he gets drafted, am I going to make the team? I'm moving over to Atlanta. But there was just a lot of uncertainties, you know. Once again, yeah, I'm a second round draft pick, but am I really going to make the team? Come on, come on, come on. Finish, finish. Get this out. Good. Prove yourself all over again that you deserve yeah. to be there. And yeah, it was, we didn't realize how stressful that was for him. But it was the same way when he went to Montana State. And I told him, you went over there and you just worked hard and you earned everybody's respect. And I kind of think he did the same thing down there. He worked hard and, and people were very good to him. And Riley Dixon's punt is blocked. The punt is blocked and a scoop and score. Lorenzo Carter. Troy Anderson! How's that for a hook score? Let's go! Let's go! Troy Anderson, the rookie from Montana State. We went to the Falcons Cardinals game, and it was crazy because you watch 44 run out there, and it's the same guy you've grown up watching. And there's a real local element to that. You're like, oh, I'm just I'm just here watching Troy again. And then you kind of look around. And you're like, this is the NFL, so this is this is just a little bit different. You have an in-state guy like him develop here, excel here, and uh, make his way here. I think that's a story that can be told for a long, long time. You know, if you want to look at it from a big picture perspective, I can't name a more deserving former Bobcat to be at the top of Mount Rushmore. I mean, he's certainly um, one of those guys. He's um, within our program, which I've been around for a long time. He's the best that I've ever seen do it. So, I mean, that places him in pretty good company. There's a sense of pride that you have of being a part of his story. The whole year it was like you'd never done it before, so it was uncertain and throw me out there on my first few reps of defense and I was just like, oh boy, <laughs> like what am I doing? And then like once you get your feet wet a little bit, it gets so much easier. Everybody's so good and so fast and so big and I guess so you have to accept that you're not going to win 100% of the time. And I think that that's what everybody always strives to do. And which is fair, like that's what you should do, but it's not possible. Like everybody's so talented, you're gonna lose a rep and uh, you have to like learn to accept that and just learn how to like put that play behind you and move on. Hey, there we go. It's a little guy. <laughs> there you go. When I reflect on it, I think it was it was good. You make it through and you're like, man, that, that was it was good, it was productive. I learned so much. 
and got better from week one to, to the end of the season. Like every week, there's things that I want to improve on and get better. And so I'm excited for, for next year and try to do that. And this off season, I think it's been, been good so far. He hasn't forgot where he came from. He's really, he's, he's very, very humble. He's made some money and it hasn't changed him. He hasn't, I don't think he's bought a fishing pole, right? <laughs> So many people praise him for his athletic ability and to me I've just seen him grow in so many other ways as well and so I would say just the game of football has challenged him to come out of his comfort zone and become a leader to so many individuals and he really is kind of true to himself and who he's always been and I don't see that ever changing so. That's where Troy's jersey's gonna go. This is kind of where the Wall of Champions are and a couple of pictures. Yeah. Hopefully his mom has them already for us. So not only to this school and to all of the teachers, the faculty and the coaches here, but the community, the community members, all the little kids, the amount of time that he put in, you know, and be state, multiple state champions in football and basketball and the performances that he did in track, it just goes to show that you can do everything, you know, and anything if you want to put your mind to it. As a three-sport athlete, he was such a great leader on and off the floor, and he's such a great person. Again, that has to come back to, you know, his family and his upbringing and stuff like that. So he was on solid ground right from the start. I mean, it's pretty awesome to be here and see where he came from and, and to meet y'all. And I mean, I just have to imagine that y'all are like immensely proud. Oh, yeah. But what is it about him that you're most proud of? Just, I mean, this is our kid. Troy's just, oh my gosh, just blossomed into some, I don't want to cry, but. Um, I'm just really proud of the man he's become. You know, he's just such a strong, strong, independent person. I'm just, I could not be more proud of both of my kids, but yeah. Everybody's happy for him. It's a town of 5,000. It's a unique place and the people here are like genuine and kind and care for one another regardless of if you've ever met them or not. Like I've had people that have reached out and I don't know them and I you know I've never met them or they don't they don't know me and they're just so supportive and I mean it's it's awesome whether you're driving in Dillon, Bozeman, Billings, like anywhere, you're gonna find people that are that are rooting for me, which is like kinda crazy because it's like I'm just a kid from Dillon.